good day to you, partner. I'm Dean, and I can already tell that I'll be your best friend in this forsaken camp. Hey guys, Wheat Solo here, aka the Skeleton King. Uh, but today I am in my alias, also known as Poop Solo, the Doo Doo King. And um, for those of you who may not know, I've actually played all of the summon classes. I guess not technically Sin, but Shadow Master slash Shadow Warrior aren't quite actual summons yet. They're getting there. I don't think they want them to be actual, like, complete summons on their own. Although they're getting pretty good. So, that is kind of cool. Uh, but I played uh, summons on for an entire season. And actually, Pacifist Doodoo is the longest I played a season since season two, legitimately. And I actually had a lot of fun playing the build. And I will be playing it again. Now, someone asked me to relook at Pacifist Doodoo because of the buffs to Hunger. Uh, also, since I played the build, Spirit of Borbs has been buffed a slight amount, the synergies to it, and then Poison Creeper has been reworked. Now, technically, the Poison Creeper rework kind of is a wash for this build. In fact, I think the damage might be slightly lower uh, because they nerf the base damage a lot when they fix synergies. But this build doesn't have a lot of space for the synergies. Now, you can lean more into certain areas depending on how you want to play it. Um, but for, for my preferred play style of going bear with hunger, it's hard to put more points into the poison creeper, um, than just carry and vine poison creeper. And the reason you have carry and vine is because that's a synergy to spirit of borb. Um, but that still kind of works. I felt like the poison creeper still did significant damage, uh, but I don't know if it's best now. In fact, what I'd probably say is, is that if you wanted to be optimal with pacifist doo, -doo you'd actually run maul. But then you're not pacifist. And I don't think it's worth it to run Maul without actually attacking. Uh, but if you bothered to put IES jewels in your Stone Crusher and used Maul, I think the build would overall be improved. But there's a reason why we're not going to attack. And so let me just kind of talk about pacifist doo, doo and why I think the build has a legitimate reason to exist in this game. Uh, the clear speed is not going to impress you, uh, but keep in mind this gear is very basic pacifist doo doo gear. Um, nothing is special on it. Technically getting sockets on all those items would be cool, but the overall assortment from top to bottom for pacifist doo doo is really not that impressive. Um, very much like a month into the game, a lot of this gear is basically free. Because uh, no one plays this build, and a lot of this gear is very specific. Stam Storm Treks are not that popular. Carry On Winds are not that popular. Uh, but you're missing a lot of cores, which really help this build function. Life after each kill, more ATD. Um, those are the biggest things I actually noticed missing from this build, is just the ATD cores you can get and life after each kill. Um, but we're neither here nor there. But just know, like, you can get... Basically, I was getting 15k ATD. This build has about 12k ATD. And the open wounds doesn't make up for it because open wounds is way slower. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's just finish <laughs> describing what Pacifist Doo, Doo does. Instead of attacking enemies, you click on interactables, okay? So some of you guys might not even know this. Um, but there are these items in the game. Um, right here we have these caskets. Now I know you're distracted by these skeletons coming up and swinging at me. And now you're distracted by me spawning pots. But while some people think the most important thing in this game is attacking these little pixel sprites on screen that have animations and attack and are honestly fairly interesting for an ARPG that is 25 years old. I think there's a lot of good variety in Diablo 2. I think Blizzard usually did a good job making variety um, to their hack and slash games um, to not make all the enemies kind of just feel like either a small, big, medium or big mob. They kind of have a little more personality than that. But those are the good points. But they're not. They're still not that interesting, okay? I want more from life. And what you can get from life is, look at this. You see that dead rogue? I just literally fondled a dead rogue and got pots. Okay, enough memeing. Interactables are actually worth more than a mob. In fact, a locked chest is basically as good as an entire champ pack, if not two champ packs, and regular chests are worth about a champ pack. Um, so if you may not know this about this game, um, there are rune drop tables, all these item drop tables. I think it's a little too much for this video because if I start talking about this, it's literally going to take the rest of the video. 
But basically, know this. Interactables are actually worth quite a bit of time. Uh, but it does take time to hit them. But the cool thing is, is if you're playing a build that never attacks, you can just spend that time looting the corpse or the casket. And then the enemies kill themselves. So thus, now you understand why Pacifist Doo, Doo I think, actually has a legitimate reason to be ran. Now, still, is it as good as Poison Nova? No. Is it as good as the top 10 mapping builds in the game? No. But should it get an honorable mention? Yes. Okay, so let's move forward. Uh, I'll talk about Hunger in a second. Let's just talk about um, um, summons in general on, on Druid. They're terrible, except for the bear. But instead of making the bad summons better, they made the bear better. But at least bears are better, and bears are very good summons. In fact, I thought they might have been as good as Valkyries, as in two compared to three. Now with their buffs, they're probably just straight up better than Valkyries, unless you roll ridiculous gear in Valkyries. And yes, Valkyries roll gear. Uh, there's even a helm now that lets you summon additional bears. So bears are so cool. Unfortunately, they are tied a bit to the shitty summons that Druid has, which are wolves. And I'm not even a fan of ravens, but ravens do do good damage. My problem with ravens is just I think they're a waste of a cast, which is annoying because they're your second best summon. I So I don't understand the design philosophy of Senpai nerfing what I consider to be some of the worst summons in the game. Uh, especially Dire Wolves, which literally used to be the worst summon in the game. And I think if you still compare 5 to 3, they're not much better than Spirit Wolves. And Spirit Wolves got nerfed massively. If you guys didn't know, the Spirit Wolves used to do more DPS than Dire Wolves. I, but I don't, I don't make decisions on any build in this game. And um, so just my little shout out, please make the other Druid summons more playable. I'm not a fan of ravens, but they are pretty good. They really are. They do. They appear to do as much DPS as bears. At least they used to. Now they probably do um, a little bit less. I just don't like having to cast them, for, t for what I pay, I would consider not that worth it, except for single target. But like wolves need more identity and damage. In fact, actually both. They need identity and damage. Dire wolves have no identity, and spirit wolves have very little identity. Um, kind of like how now clay golems have crushing blow. And a slow, blood golems have their bleed, uh, life on hit, and then fire golems are Papega. So, there. Let's move on from Druid Summons, because they, they're just... it's sad. How does the hunger change affect this build? Basically, not at all. Now, I ran hunger on my old build, so yes, it is a legitimate straight buff. But I feel like the amount of open wounds damage it gives doesn't change anything. I think the only thing it would change is, is if I wanted to bother killing bosses on this build, it would make bossing more enjoyable. So I would say this. I, I don't know how this affects other builds in the game, but to me, the open wounds damage on hunger is way too little. Now, it's I can't imagine it's too good if you actually run a build, a melee bear, and go hunger maul, and like the open wounds damage just blows your nuts off. And the reason why I'd say that is because I actually played budget whirlwind bleed barb, and like with double blood letter, and so you get a ton of open wounds just from your skills. You go one point whirlwind, and then your blood letters also give you a ton of life after each kill, and you just whirlwind your way to victory. And I don't think that build would feel anything similar on now your bear option for open wounds. So hopefully they buff that a bit. And um, is there anything else you can do with the build? Let's try to wrap this up. Actually, you know what? If you want to learn more about Pacifist Doodoo, -doo, I'll make an actual video in the season. Or you can watch my old video because honestly, not enough has changed to make anything different. So let's talk about, in general, what I'm going to be doing for the rest of the season or beta before launch. And then maybe what I'm going to plan on doing next season. I'm going to try to play as much as I can next season. There, I'll leave it at that. Uh, worst comes to worst, I'll make videos I find interesting, DPS checks, interaction checks, etc. Um, for the rest of beta, I want to... Tr what we and I... Well, the Wheat and Moogs podcast will happen. Power Bottoms Pods. And I want to see if I can do two guides. A legitimate, like, newbie PD2 guide. That one might not happen. Someone asked for it. He's not a newbie, but he's like asking for some of the changes he's missed since season five. Lol. Um, again, not a newbie, but a guy who just hasn't played in a while. But like, I only know the changes that affect Necromancer, really, or some of the slight other builds I've played. But I, that might happen. The one that probably will happen is a kind of a beginner guide on Necromancer 
uh, what to do to get to hell, how to farm hell effectively with some of the different options you have. Just talking about the first few days of ladder, basically. And for now, still looking out, guys. GG. Come and play with us, Danny.